1984, a team from Minnesota wanted to travel to Norway Cup, the world's largest international youth soccer tournament in the world, and uh, held in Oslo. So they went to the Sons of Norway, which is a local insurance company, and said, hey, will you sponsor our teams and send us to Norway? Ivor Sorensen uh, came to me. I was vice president for public relations at Sons of Norway, and he wanted to take a team to uh, Norway Cup. We asked for a little support uh, organizationally and financially to get our boys over there through their charter flight program. We talked about um, what the possibilities were to, to do something like that and we said, well, you know, maybe we should do something like that in Minnesota. Let's try to recreate the, you know, something like a Norway Cup, a soccer tournament in Minnesota. Instead of teams going from Minnesota and traveling and spending all the money, why don't we become the destination and offer it here? I went to Norway and got support from uh, the organizers of Norway Cup. And we said, this was in 1984, and we said, we'll do an inaugural USA Cup in 1985. One of the other little issues that we had is, um, we had to decide where are we gonna play? <laughs> Back when the tournament started, there was no national sports center. We have another nine months. We will figure out where to play this, these games. And we looked at places where we could have multiple fields. Uh, St. Thomas Academy was interested in doing it. And we have looked at the Snelling Park area, we have looked at Burnsville, Eden Prairie. The uh, leading candidate was the Fort Snelling Polo Grounds. And there was, so we went out and did a tour of the, of the Polo Grounds and realized that um, the uh, uh, facilities were pretty basic and there wasn't a lot of grass. <laughs> But there was a place called the Blaine Soccer Complex, which was pretty much the largest soccer field complex in the Twin Cities area. They coaxed us into coming up here and taking a look at the facilities, and uh, the city council made an investment in trying to uh, build some additional fields on some airport land that they had here. And that was the site that was chosen for the very first USA Cup. and. Um, Six years later, it became the site of uh, the National Sports Center as well. So we were going to do a small tournament, you know, maybe eight teams, uh, and see if we could. If we were lucky, we we'd bring in eight Norwegian teams and eight Minnesota teams and have a small tournament. The youth association said, "Well, you can get four teams to come, and they can play four teams from here. We'll have a buddy of teams." We sent out the invitations, and we thought, "Well, you know, let's let's open it up to uh, some other folks." It was such a popular idea that all the Minnesota teams wanted to play them. There were more Minnesota area teams that said, "Hey, can we get involved? Can we get involved? Let's make it bigger." Uh, lo and behold, we ended up with you know, 68 teams that first year from like six different states as far as California and, and Texas. Eleven of them were from Norway and that created a, a great amount of excitement because there hadn't been many international teams that, uh, that had ever played in Minnesota. First year there was 60 teams, the second year there was over 100, but by the third year there was 200. It really grew. There was a lot of interest generated all over the world so we had teams from, uh, from Japan that came and huge splash. You know, when I think back about the first year, for instance, headquarters was a screen tent from Kmart or something, and the headquarters phone was a, you know, $5 cheap white plastic phone and, uh, and a, a card table and one chair. <laughs> that was headquarters and we had a mash tent for the medical folks that we set up and that was it. I mean, and some soccer fields that we played on. Uh, in the first years, uh, paper posting on site was the only way that the results were posted. And we could print them. We had a printer inside a tent. A tent was headquarters. And so the computer was in there with a long extension cord and one of the moms from New Brighton would type in the scores as they came in. So they came in on slips of paper, she'd type it in and then she would print the records and then we would post it outside on the side of the tent or on a tree. We tried to take you know, a number of areas each year and try to improve upon them. 
Um, and, you know, from those early days of having, you know, a screen tent with a card table in it <laughs> as headquarters to move, you know, evolving to bringing in trail construction trailers for headquarters um, to the, uh, the genesis of the National Sports Center. In 1987, the state of Minnesota created the Minnesota Amateur Sports Commission which was a brand new state agency and also the agency that invented the National Sports Center and built the National Sports Centers. These are kind of evolutionary uh, things that you had. USA Cup came first, then the state created the agency, and then the National Sports Center you know, followed uh, soon thereafter. But they were all part of the same goal and philosophy to create events in Minnesota that would be biggest and best. The facility, this facility opened in 1990. Um, the USA Cup was placed here as the anchor tenant of the facility. And the goal was this is intended to be the largest tournament in America and that goal was set in 1984. Uh, we had a good dream and uh, we were able to deliver on that I think.